In this video, I'm gonna show you eight After Effects tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I was starting out. Hey there, my name is Cameron with Motion Science and I've been using After Effects for over 20 years now. And in that time, I've learned a lot of tips and tricks to help me get better and more efficient when using After Effects. So in this video, I'm gonna show you eight of those tips and tricks to help you become more of a pro user in After Effects. Let's get started. Okay, tip number one, the pan behind tool. Pan behind tool is an awesome tool to use for moving the anchor point. So we can move the anchor point anywhere in a layer, vector layer, raster layer, footage layer, and rotate from that anchor point. We can also scale from that anchor point. Wherever that anchor point needs to be, the pan behind tool can move that anchor point to that position. Pan behind tool is also great for footage. So if I have an in and out point set on my footage like we see in this composition, I can then drag left to keep my in and out points the same, but move that footage further down my timeline. I can also drag right to move my footage. So if we have a set in and out point, like we're doing an edit, we can use the pan behind tool to drag left and right to adjust our footage within that in and out point. We can also shorten our out point like we see here, still drag our in and out point and get our footage just exactly how we need it with the pan behind tool. Tip number two is replace layer. All we have to do is select a footage layer, a graphic layer in our project file, hold down alter option and drag on top of a layer in our timeline and that layer is automatically updated with our new footage. As you can see here, it keeps the same in and out points, but it just replaces the layer. We can also use this replace layer with vector layer. So I can take this vector layer we see here, I can hold down alter option, drag and replace my layer on my timeline. As you can see, the anchor point, the scale, the rotation, it all remains the same on that layer, just a new graphic layer to replace it. Tip number three, continually rasterize. So if we have any type of vector layer, we can scale it up as far as we want and turn on continually rasterize and it will give us completely crisp edges to our vector layer. So as you can see here, the continually rasterize options turned on. If I turn it off, we have a lot of aliasing happening. But if I turn it on, we've got crystal clear edges. Doesn't matter what we scale it to. Tip number four, continually rasterize can also be used uh, to break apart 3D pre-comps. So what I have here is I have three pre-comp layers and I've got some camera movement here. If you look within each of these pre-comps, you're gonna see there's multiple 3D layers positioned in 3D space as we see here, right? There's different layers pushed back in space. And you can see also example number two, we've got multiple layers back in space, positioned on, in Z space. And we've got pre-comp number three, which is actually multiple pre-comps positioned in Z space. What we can do is by using continually rasterize, we can turn that on and it's going to actually collapse transformations. And as you can see, as soon as I do that, it gives us our depth for our pre-comps. So our camera can move around these pre-comps and have lots of layers in 3D space, but we're only seeing three pre-comps in our timeline. So it's an easy way to keep your timeline tidy and neat while working with lots of 3D layers in After Effects. Tip number five. Let's say you wanna see your main composition, but you also need to see the pre-comp, what's going on inside the pre-comp at the same time as you're reviewing your main composition. To do that, all you have to do is go up here to the top of your composition to where it says the composition name, click and then click new comp viewer. And just like that, you're gonna have two compositions. You're gonna be able to see your main composition in one window and your pre-comp in the other window. This enables you to work on adjusting elements inside your pre-comp while seeing how they affect the overall composition in your output comp. Tip number six. So let's say you want to have something flicker on and off screen. To do this, you have to set multiple keyframes. You set a keyframe for 0% opacity, and then maybe you move forward two frames and set a keyframe for 100% opacity. Then you move forward another frame, 0% opacity so on and so forth. You can do this for opacity, you can do this for position, whatever it may be. 
but there's a way around having to add all of these extra keyframes, and that is through using hold keyframes. Hold keyframes work by setting a normal keyframe, then right-clicking and selecting hold keyframe. What this does is hold the value until we hit the next keyframe. So we can set one opacity keyframe for 0%, move forward two frames, set a keyframe for 100%, move forward a few frames again, set another keyframe for 0%. By doing this, the values are held until the next keyframe is hit. So in essence, it enables us to use half the keyframes that we would normally have to use to do a simple effect like a flicker effect like we see here. Tip number seven. So do you ever experience a problem where you set a keyframe for position, you move down the timeline, set another keyframe for another point of position, and then move to the end of the timeline and set a third keyframe. And you'll notice that the center keyframe has a little bit of a curve to it. And maybe you don't want a curve to it. Maybe you just want the movement to be linear, right? With no curve there. We just want it to, we want our ball to move from position one to position two to position three, all in a linear manner. The way to fix this is to go to After Effects Preferences and under General, you're going to enable this preference right here, Default Spatial Interpolation to Linear. Click OK. And now, whenever you set keyframes inside of After Effects, you can set a keyframe at position one, a keyframe at position two, and a keyframe at position three, and you're gonna see there, our motion path is completely linear. This is how I work 100% of the time. If I want a curve added into my motion path, I would rather create that curve after the point than have my keyframes rove through space and creating additional movement that I don't want to have. And tip number eight. Anytime someone asks you to send them the After Effects project file, it's important that you also bundle up any assets that are used inside that project file. The easy way to do that is to go to File, Dependencies, Collect Files. And from here, you will need to save your project and then you can select if you want to collect source files for all the comps or for selected comps. It's completely up to you. Generally, I'm using all comps because I've reduced my project down to just what I need. And by clicking collect, you're gonna see here that this project file can be collected. There's four files, 104 megabytes, and 12 effects. And it's going to collect the entire project file. I can save it out in a nice tidy folder structure here. And now I can compress this, zip this folder, and send it off to whomever needs the project file. This final tip is going to save you a ton of time. What we have here is a project file that I have set up of how I like to work. So I have my output composition, I have my comps, my pre-comps, my working comps, and I have a folder structure for AE imports, audio, edit, footage, pre-renders, raster, vectors, so on and so forth. You can set this up however you like to work. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to File, Save As, and save your project file anywhere on your local hard drive, on any external hard drive, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna save this After Effects project file out anywhere on your computer and give it the appropriate name. And after you've done that, you're going to go to your After Effects preferences and you're gonna to go to new project preference. Here, you're going to choose your project template. This is gonna be the file that you just saved out and you're gonna select that file, click OK and that's all you have to do. Now, anytime you load up a new project file, this folder structure is going to load up automatically with your compositions, whatever it is that you like to have in your project files, they're gonna load up here immediately. You don't have to set up new folder structures. You don't have to set up new compositions. It's here, it's ready to go, and you can start working. I hope that you really enjoyed this lesson as much as I loved teaching it. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style, and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Cameron and this is Motion Science.